united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Hello, everyone. Welcome to United with Christ. It's a great day here at KSCE uh, Channel 38. I am a Pastor Jesse Medina from Cornerstone Church, and I will be your host uh, this morning here at United with Christ. I'm joined uh, this morning uh, by my beautiful daughter, uh, Ileana Saray. Ileana, why don't you go ahead and say hello to um, our audience this morning. Hello, thank you for joining us today. I'm really excited to be here and uh, dive into what we're going to share with you today. And so our topic this morning is missions matter. Missions matter. We are blessed to live in El Paso, Texas. I also want you to know that we are blessed to be a border city because we uh, have neighbors uh, to the south uh, from here. And uh, it's Ciudad Juarez, Mexico. And we are just so uh, ecstatic of what's going on. And so this morning we want to talk about missions. And I, I, I brought in my daughter, Ileana, because Ileana has been on missions trips and she's done missionary work. And so, Ileana, could you go ahead and, and let us know why missions matter? Yeah, well, you know, final words are always important. And right before Jesus ascended into, ev into heaven, excuse me, he told his disciples uh, to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And so uh, what would, you know, if your grandfather was passing away, I would imagine that you would feel his last words were very important and you would always remember them. I doubt you would ever forget them. And so in the same way, when Jesus is ascending into heaven, the last thing he tells his disciples is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And so how could we think that that's not important to do if that was the last thing on his mind before he ascends into heaven? He knows that he's going to be going away. He knows that he can't continue the work on the earth unless there be a vessel, unless there be somebody willing, somebody ready to do the work that he was doing to continue it. And so that's why he tells his disciples to go and preach the gospel, continue the work that I was doing because I go to my father and he's going to send, you know, he already sent them a helper, but it's their job to do that work of preaching the gospel. And so that's why it's so important. And it's a, something, a responsibility for every single believer because these are disciples that he's speaking to, right? The 12. And so the 11 are here. And when he's telling them uh, to go and preach the gospel, that's you. You're a disciple of Christ if you're a believer. And so that's your responsibility as well. And that's something that every believer needs to be a part of is preaching the gospel and making sure that the gospel goes out. Yes, yes, amen. And I believe it's, it's throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But could you go ahead and read uh, Matthew, uh, the uh, 28th chapter, and go ahead and read where Jesus gives the great uh, commission. Yeah. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. So we see that it's the Great Commission. It's not the Great Suggestion. It's a command. It's a Amen. commandment. And we all need to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're also reminded in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is the Acts, really, of the Holy Spirit, of the Holy Ghost. And uh, Acts, Jesus tells us emphatically, and he tells his disciples he says, you know what, but you shall receive power. It's in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and into the uttermost part of the world. And so we're excited about uh, missions, and missions do matter to the heart of God. And, yeah. and uh, Ileana, I wanted to see if you could share with us your heart on how God called you to do missionary work. Well, when I was uh, in high school, there were some evangelists that came. I went to a Christian school, and so they came to our school and uh, did chapel for us for a week. And they were talking about how they had preached the gospel 
in uh, some of the most remote places of the world and done mass crusades and seen thousands uh, call upon the name of the Lord at one time. And, you know, my eyes were just opened um, because I didn't really grow up around that. It was, I grew up, you know, in church, but I didn't really see a lot of lost people coming in and getting saved. And so for me, it felt like it was the first time I was seeing that. And it really touched my heart. And so I asked my parents uh, if I could go on a mission trip. Uh, I wanted to go right away, like in two months, but it was pretty difficult because uh, missions that requires a lot of finances. And so we had to wait a year, but I did get to go. And uh, I went on my first trip to Ethiopia and we faced a lot of opposition while we were there because uh, they were predominantly Muslim, which is, you know, the point we're trying to go to a Muslim community so we could see them uh, get saved. But we just faced a lot of opposition. And so, you know, I just saw the need that like, man, there there needs to be people that go out and preach the gospel in these places of the world. And so I just kept going. I went on a second trip and it was on my second trip that I had the opportunity to lead somebody to the Lord for the first time. And, you know, like, I actually think that's sad. I grew up in church. Um, at this point, I was maybe 18, and it was my first time ever being in the church 18 years. It was my first time ever leading somebody to the Lord. Um, but, you know, like, praise God for grace and just for showing me, uh, even at a young age, even though I had been in the church a long time, I still got to do it at a young age. Uh, we went to a school in Haiti, and uh, I got to share the gospel with like a crowd of maybe 200 kids. And um, in that moment, I'll never forget uh, leading them in the prayer of salvation and just feeling the compassion of Jesus mm. when I was uh, sharing, when I was leading them in the prayer of salvation, you know, telling, we were, I was telling them at the, as loud as you can, I want you to say, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord. And as I was saying that, it was the first time that I could like tangibly feel the love of God, like working in and through me to reach the people. And all I could think about was in Matthew nine, the compassion of Jesus, where, you know, it says Jesus is going about teaching in the synagogues, um, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, um, every sickness, every disease, he's going about, he's reaching people. And then it says, but he sees the multitude. And when he looks on the multitude, he sees that they're weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd and that he's filled with compassion for them. And that's how I felt in that moment. I was filled with compassion because I saw people who were on their way to hell. If no one reached them, if no one preached to them, if no one told them, they would go to hell. And so it was my first time experiencing that, the compassion of Jesus. And man, I was hooked uh, since that moment. It was like, I knew I would never be satisfied doing anything else than telling people about Jesus um, for the rest of my life. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. You mentioned Haiti, but uh, can you mention some of the nations that you've been to? Yes. Um, I've had the honor of going to, uh, let's see, let's try to do them in order, Ethiopia, Haiti, China. I did some work in Mexico, um, Thailand, Ecuador, Albania, Peru, and then uh, I'll be going to Southeast Asia this summer. So. Okay, okay, Southeast Asia, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell our viewers and our brothers and sisters, the body of Christ, can you share with them what is God doing right now in these last couple of uh, years and months that you've traveled? Uh, what is God doing in the nations? Yeah, well, um, people everywhere, I think, are really hungry for the gospel, especially the younger generation. I think where before uh, the younger generation really tried to stay away from church, I, I see like a return to the things of God where young people are just hungry. They know that they're empty and that they, they know that there's got to be something more to life than what they've experienced. And so I really see just a hunger, a searching for the things of God, um, to know him and to know him in all his power. Um, and not just, you know, story tale, not just fairy tales and stories. Um, but Jesus alive and at work today. Okay. And you mentioned the young people, uh, earlier you had mentioned that you had ministered to around 200, uh, school aged uh, children. Tell me about the kids. What, what have you seen with the little ones, with the younger ones? Uh, well, it's just so easy to preach to 
uh, young people because they're just so hungry for the gospel um, and they haven't been, you know, while they may have seen like a lot of things in the world, they haven't, I think, been tainted by so so many things of the world. And it, I mean, it's like, you know, Jesus says that you're supposed to have faith like a child. And why does he say that? Well, because it's easy for a child to have faith because they haven't like, not that they haven't experienced any hardship, but, you know, they're not carrying a load that some that an adult might be carrying. They're not carrying weights that an adult might be carrying. And so it's just easy for them to have faith and to believe. When you share the gospel with children, they, they always believe. They always believe. You don't have to talk, you don't have to talk a child into believing that God is real, that God exists and that he loves them. It's inerrant in them. They just believe it. For an adult, sometimes, you know, you have to make sure like the power of God is present sometimes for them to believe because they refuse to believe because they've just been uh, so, they've just gone through so many things in the world. Uh, they're so beaten down. They're so bruised and crushed and they feel defeated. And so it takes like convincing, but in a child, it doesn't take that. You share the gospel with a kid and they'll, and they'll believe it instantaneously. They'll just receive it. And you know, Eliana, one of the, um, one of the things that just excites me is when you shared a couple of video segments of, of your trips and you could see the enthusiasm, the energy with these little ones. Because you, you know my background as, a, as an educator, mm -hmm. uh, before I went into full-time ministry, uh, I was with the little ones, you know, with the elementary uh, school children. And uh, one of the things that I saw in the videos that you shared with mom and myself and the family and our church family, uh, there's just so, so much excitement, so much joy, so much happiness when you all are there, when the team mm -hmm. is there and arrives to the country. So um, uh, tell me a little bit more about that or, or do you feel that, that is that always there from start to finish? Um, yeah, I would say definitely. You know, it just, it says a lot, I think, uh, to anybody. What I think is really, really, really special about missionary work and makes it very unique. You know, it's not a five-fold ministry gift, right? But um, you do operate in fivefold ministry gifts as a missionary. You have to because, you know, you could be a missionary pastor. You could be a missionary evangelist, a missionary teacher. Um, and so I think what's really special about a missionary is that, you know, they're leaving their home. They're leaving everything that they know, all their comfort, to go to another place, to a people that the Lord has called them to reach and preach the gospel to them. And that's their, that's their only goal, their only objective is to preach the gospel. So they literally will leave their home, their comfort, and go to another region of the world that's totally foreign to them simply to preach the gospel and to see those people saved um, from eternal damnation. And so I think that that's special to anybody, you know, to kids, but to anybody. Kids get excited because, like, when we go to Africa, sometimes it's kids' first time seeing, you know, a white person. And so they get really excited because it's like they've never seen a white person. Um, and then like even in other nations of the world where, you know, they have seen people from around the world, it's just really special to them to think that you would leave your home just to come. It demands, it demands an audience when, when you leave your home and you go and you say, I have a very important message that I came thousands of miles to share with mm, you. It yes. just, it demands an audience. Yes. Like you, if someone, if an, you know, someone from India was here in El Paso and they came up to me and said, hey, I came all the way from India uh, to share something with you, I would listen to them, you know, even if it was something that I didn't agree with, something that I didn't believe, I would listen to them because it's like, yeah, I mean, you came all this way. And so um, I think that's special. Uh, and that's why, you know, the kids, everybody, they, they light up when they see us because we've traveled a long way for one sole reason, to share the gospel. Yes, yes. And that's why uh, at uh, Cornerstone Church, and I'm, I'm sure that there are a lot of uh, churches, uh, the body of Christ, we, uh, we feel missions do matter to the heart of God um, and uh, to comfort because they leave the comforts of their country, in this case, the United States, uh, to go to another, to another country so that they can go ahead and comfort uh, their, the people mm. where they're at and where they can go ahead and share the gospel of peace and the good news. Let me go ahead and ask you a question. Uh, what obstacles have you or challenges have you uh, encountered? Hmm. 
Yeah, well, I touched on it uh, just a little bit earlier. Um, when I went on my first trip to Ethiopia, you know, uh, I go with a group. They're called Global Ventures. They're based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, wonderful, wonderful organization. Uh, and, you know, their main objective is to go to unreached areas of the world. So areas where people either have the least access to the gospel because governments try to restrict their access, their people's access, and, um, you know, they're, or we just go to areas where it's very remote groups of people and, you know, they don't use a lot of technology for whatever reason. And those are the people that we try to reach. And so um, when we went to Ethiopia, that's the kind of demographic we were trying to reach was a Muslim community. Um, some of the people there were hearing the gospel for the first time. And but because because that was the demographic, right, that they were majority Muslim mm -hmm. uh yeah, predominantly Muslim. They, uh, some of the like elders of the village we were in, because we had permission from the government to be there, but some of the elders from that region, um, you know, they found out we were like trying to convert people, trying to get people saved and preach, share the gospel with them. And so they didn't like that. And so they basically, because just because they're elders in the community, they have a say. And so they said that we weren't allowed to go to any of the schools that had already said yes and given us meetings. They canceled all of our meetings in schools. We were supposed to do evening crusades where thousands of people were gathering at night. After doing one night of the crusade, uh, they, they made us cancel it the second night. And then so we had to get like the local people to do it a third night and a fourth night. Um, but we weren't able to do the ministry ourselves. And so, you know, just things like that. There's opposition. I wouldn't say it's persecution because we didn't, you know, we didn't suffer any bodily harm or anything, um, but it's just opposition, strong opposition against the gospel in those regions of the world, uh, you know, that need that need it most. Mm -hmm. And so that's probably. Okay. And you, you, you had mentioned uh, to me that, uh, yes, thank God and thank the Lord that the angels of the Lord were, were with you, but because you didn't feel any any, um, you know, strong, strong opposition where there was bodily harm. Mm. But you had mentioned at one time that they had picked up uh, rocks. Yes, yes. So the founder of the organization, uh, his name is John Smithwick. He uh, obviously is on every trip. I, I only pick a few and join them, but he's on every trip. And there have been multiple occasions, yeah, where he's preaching uh, in an evening crusade. Excuse me, not multiple. There was one occasion where he was preaching in an evening crusade and people in the crowd picked up rocks and threw them uh, at, at him while he was preaching at his translators. And one of the rocks actually hit the translator and the translator started bleeding. So then, you know, it's kind of hard to continue the crusade when your translator's bleeding. And so they had to, you know, they made it work. But um, yeah, sometimes, yeah, sometimes there, there's more opposition. Sometimes it is persecution. I haven't experienced that, but I do know people who have. Mm, so. Mm. so that's why it's so important to keep uh, our missionaries and those that do missions work uh, in prayer constantly. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the most rewarding uh, uh, to you uh, uh, to do in uh, re regarding missions work in doing missions work? What is most satisfying and rewarding to you? Uh, just seeing people, either people hearing the gospel for the first time. That's really satisfying. There have been. Uh, so, like in Thailand, it's very common for you to walk up to somebody and say, has anybody ever told you about Jesus? Just a simple question like that. And you know, in the United States, people would laugh at that question because it's like, yeah, of course, like everybody's heard about Jesus. But there are countries of the world uh, where they've never heard the name of Jesus. And so, yeah, it's very common to walk up to somebody in Thailand and say, has anybody ever told you about Jesus? And um, I've even heard stories of uh, a, a, someone from Thailand responding uh, no, is he here? Where is he? Like thinking mm. that, you know, he, he was actually talking about a friend or something who was actually there uh, in the room with them. And so that's super satisfying, knowing that the Lord used you to share the gospel with somebody um, who had never heard it before. And then another thing that's also, I mean, it's the greatest feeling in the world, I think, is just leading somebody to Jesus, right. is sharing the gospel with them and leading them in the prayer of salvation and knowing that, like, the Lord is starting a work in their hearts and uh, just trusting him to complete it. Amen. So you've said just sharing the gospel itself, 
seeing people come to Christ, people saying, oh, is he here? I want to see him. You've also mentioned about mm -hmm. miracles. You've seen miracles. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Miracles uh, are still for today. Miracles uh, happen all the time when we're on the field. We always pray for people to uh, be healed if they're suffering from anything in their body. And I've seen uh, multiple times where, you know, backs are made straight. People who are bent over and crooked um, and had difficulty walking weren't able to walk. And then we pray, we pray for them. And by the power of God, their back is completely healed. It's made straight. They're able to walk. Uh, people who aren't able to, you know, jump are jumping up and down. Uh, we've seen tumors disappear. Wow. Um, one, one little boy in Ethiopia, we went to an orphanage in Ethiopia. He had a tumor on his arm. And literally, as we prayed, the translator said he could feel the tumor go down as we were saying mm. the prayer. And Praise then God. it was maybe like, uh, maybe smaller than a golf ball and went down to like the size of a pea by the time uh, we were done praying. Mm. And then just multiple things, blind eyes, uh, being open, people who are deaf, receiving their hearing. Um, I've seen, yeah, people who just didn't have like any mobility in their hands. I've seen lots of miracles in people's hands uh, where they didn't have any mobility either of their fingers or they couldn't lift their arm and just seeing uh, the Lord like restore that total mobility, total strength. And just uh, you can tell it's real because like the smile on their face after we're done praying for them, it's um, it's yeah, it's really special. It's really cool. That is awesome. That is awesome. And so all, all the countries that you've been to, you've experienced and you've seen the glory of God move in such a great way. Yes, 100%. That, that is, that's great. Miracles are for today. Amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, Amen. today, and forever. Uh, Ileana, what, um, for anyone who is, uh, what advice would you give to anyone who has a heartfelt uh, um, passion to go out to do missions work. Hmm. Yeah, I would encourage you, you know, that you didn't put that desire in your own heart, uh, you know, to leave your comfort zone. So that's obviously the Lord putting that desire in you, putting that on your heart. And so you need to be obedient. You need to obey. Um, you know, it's not, the Great Commission is not an option. And so I'm not saying everybody has to go, you know, to nations of the world and share the gospel. But I am saying that everybody is supposed to be a part of the Great Commission. And so if the Lord is putting it on your heart to be the one that goes, then uh, some of the ways you can do that, you know, there's lots of short-term mission trip organizations um, online. You can just Google it. If I had to, you know, recommend one, I would definitely recommend Global Ventures. And that's uh, the organization out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, they go on trips like five times a year. And so you can find what works well for your schedule. Join them. You know, I'm not asking you to leave your full-time job uh, to go be a missionary around the world. Only the Lord can tell you to do that. But if you have a desire, you know, to just be a small part, to be a part of that, then, um, you know, that's one way you can do that. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for that advice. I also want you to know, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, that uh, this studio here um, has... Uh, great resources also for missions work. As a matter of fact, just a couple of feet away from where I'm sitting, there is a great man of God that is uh, a missionary, and uh, there is there's a there's a school here where you can uh, get plugged in, get connected, uh, get trained and equipped so that you can go out and 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 do the work of the Lord. Uh, I met someone um, just a couple of weeks ago hear some of his students uh, that are, are, are ready to launch out and ready to do some amazing things uh, for God. Uh, and, and Ileana, you're absolutely right. What we can do uh, here as the body of believers, this is our Jerusalem. El Paso is mm -hmm. our Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Our Judea, Samaria is in, in the uh, surrounding areas like Ciudad Juarez. I know a lot of churches in the area are plugged in and are connected and are doing some amazing work uh, with 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 uh, with with ministries with other ministries and missions. Uh, we invite you to get plugged in and get connected. Every church should be supporting uh, missionaries, and so our church uh, supports uh, our uh, daughter uh, Ileana Saray, and and we also 
I have uh, two missionaries uh, uh, from the United States, and one of them is currently in Hong Kong, and now that family has grown so much mm -hmm. that now that family has, uh, they started in Turkey. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 one, one set of their household, one of their children has gone to Turkey. And so there's a lot of great work to do. And I, we are also plugged into our Italian brother. He's actually from Sicily, who is right uh, this way, would be south. And uh, he has been ministering in Ciudad Juarez, Mexico, for a long time. And God, we have seen miracles. We have seen people give their lives to Christ. We have seen a lot of great things that are in store. Um, how can people, how can the body of Christ uh, help missions and missionaries? Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, you can always uh, pray for missionaries around the world, either by name or just in general, um, just because, you know, they, you know, everybody uh, needs prayer. And so, you know, you can accomplish a lot through that. And then um, another thing, you know, it's not free to preach the gospel like it takes money it takes resources it takes finances and so you can find somebody you can find a missionary that you can sow into you know I know it's uh, your time your talent and your treasure but um, that's if the Lord puts that on your heart you can also you know find a missionary to sow into and to support financially so that they can uh, focus on their main goal and that's to preach the gospel amen well Eliana I want to thank you so much for joining us uh, here and being our guests at United with Christ. Church family, it's very, very important to be united with Christ. For more information, contact Cornerstone Church if you'd like, or contact this uh, TV station. Uh, our address is 12400 Montwood Drive. God bless you. Take care.